Hello everyone, this is Lolly, and I have just purchased the We Are Makers Jewelry Press. So I am really excited to play with this. And just, you know, I thought about it for a while, and then I realized that this really does fit some plans that I would have for uh, some projects, and you'll see. So <laughs> let's play. So this is what you see when you get it in the box. So it looks like this whole thing needs to come out here. There we go. These are the uh, alignment guides, I think they're called. We shall find out. These are the actual dies themselves that have the alphabet. Now they have other alphabets coming out. These are some metal pieces here to practice with. And I have already purchased some of the bar ones here. Uh, instruction sheet. Okay, so this needs to come off of there clearly. All right, so I am going to read up on this and then we will come back and create. So I've had some time to play with this and I have to say I'm having fun. Uh, I think there is a learning curve in that it is the depth. So it says thick, thin, and so you roll the dial this way for thicker materials, this way for thinner. But I'm finding out that I still crank that lever down really hard. So I am lightening up and realizing it doesn't take that much pressure. So what we want to do is open this up, which is the alphabet, and they do have more alphabets coming. And so this slides out, as you can see, you're going to need a cloth because there's a lot of machine oil in here. And every time you take a letter out, you're going to have to keep wiping it. And eventually that will stop. But for now, you need to do that. Figure out the piece of metal you want. So this is the one I'm going to use. And it does have this little protective film on it. Now I want to show you how to use these and then what you can do because uh, instead of constantly using these. So the purpose of this is twofold. It's to help hold this down so it doesn't slide around. And it also helps you to guide where to put the letters. Mostly it's the guide to stop it from sliding around. So there's a little bullseye right in the middle there. Let's see if I can, right there, bullseye. Put that right in the center of your material like that and then we're going to come up here and put this underneath now i'm going to show you i'm going to zoom in in a minute here okay so there is on the top there's blue letters numbers and at the bottom there's black they correspond with these and it all depends on whether you are using uh, the image or what you want to write on there is going to be even or odd spaces that includes the letters and the spaces so if you have two, i space love space you or something you have to include the spaces count all those up let's say we're going to do the word b that's three spaces so we're going to use odd spacing down here and so i'm also going to use the odd spacing down here this has to line up so the center is right over here above the one or there's a little tiny little arrow right there that's where the center of your project lines up so if i get b we've got b and e but you know i need two e's so i'll show you what we do we're going to wipe these off again and then we're going to put these down in here with the letter facing us so there's the e there's the b so we're going to put them letters facing us down and you want to have like this. See, I have three, one, one. So one will be the center of your project, and then all your letters will go out from there. So B, E, E, I will use the E twice. So once I use it here, I will back up and use it here again, or I can start this way. And so you see how this is on number one? I'm going to put the E in there, and there is a, it just goes up in there. It's kind of magnetized. Oops. It's just magnetized like that. And again, make sure the letter is facing you, the etched letter. And since I'm already set on the one here, I'm just going to push this down and not hard. Okay, you have to take some practice there. 
But now I know also that E is going to take up number three. So I'm going to slide this two itty bitty clicks. So I see the three is facing that little arrow. And I'm going to bring this down again. One hand. And then I want to do the B. And the B is number three down here. So I'll put that back in there. Make sure the B is facing me. And I'm going to move this platform so that the three is lined up here. Okay. Now, if you want, you can just lift the tape and see if you've got coverage, but I think I already did pretty well. So peel that off and there you go. It's perfect. Now, can you use this again? Yes, uh, you can. Here's what I did with this one. I just put it here so I could reuse it again, but I did push really hard on this one. So I left big holes in it. Um, let's take the letters out here. This slides in, the whole thing closes. This slides over. Great for carrying. Now I want to show you, can you use something besides these? Because clearly these aren't going to last very long. Hey, you probably go through those pretty quickly. So let's find something else and let's use our washi. Okay, let's get another piece of metal. Now these are these are also from We Are, Mem we are Makers, but I have also bought some from Hobby Lobby and these are like dog tags. So let's grab one of these. And I see these are thicker, I think, maybe not. Yeah, each one of these is thicker than the other. Now they put their little uh, vinyl on there in a color so you can really see that that's on there. And if you don't push hard, you could do a double-sided one. Okay, so let's look at this. Let's do my word for the year, which is rest. And let's say that I want it to go this way with the hole right there. So what I'm going to do is take my washi and I have, um, I've just kind of folded it in the middle and I'm going to take a pencil. I'm just going to take a pencil and mark right down the middle there. I do need that center. Then you can use your grid to line that up and put that right in the middle of where the words are going to go, not necessarily uh, the center of the item because I have a hole. But see, now that I have that line there, I could put that line right here and line it up with the arrows. Okay, oops. So I said I'm going to do the word rest. So you just slide that open, lift, pull out, get my paper towel ready. So I have R. Now rest is four letters, so I want here R, E, S, and T. Now when you pull these out, if they're really juicy, go ahead and clean the, the little tray as well. Eventually you won't have to keep wiping. R, E, S, T. Okay, so again, same thing I have, but now I'm using the blue letters so I start with four, two, two, four. I'm going to look up here. Let's go ahead and start with four. That's going to be the R. Now I know this is thicker material, so I'm going to move it just one notch over. Basically this is at an eight. R. E, and that's taking up space two. So slide this to the two is lined up. E. Now I want the S, which is the other two space. Move that. And I have a T, which is taking up the other four space. Make sure the four is aligned. And there we go. And how did we do with using washi? Perfect. And I could have pushed harder and I didn't. Let's see, because I didn't, I can also turn it over and I could do it on the other side. And the other thing is, I just, uh, th the way the word is closer to the top, you would need to also on your washi line up where the middle is this way so you can see where the letter should go. I was just looking left to right, but I could have also centered it top and bottom. But again, you can do that with washi. You don't really need the grid lines unless it just makes you um, more confident in yourself. 
So another thing, uh, maybe you're concerned about the cost of buying these pieces here. Oh, and here's another piece I did. This is chipboard. And what I did was I took, this is not even cut very evenly. I see it's really wide down here. Um, I took strips of chipboard left over that I had from another project and I hit, this is uh, graphics chipboard and I had used their um, double tack adhesive to put cardstock on and then I cut it in strips. So now I can do a word on here and let's see, this could be a great embellishment on a project. So let's do the washi again, see where that gets us to hold this down. Okay, I might need a couple strips because it's so long that I can't get the washi down. There you go. I can't get the washi on both sides. So I'm using two strips of this washi. I'm just going to go ahead and put this on here. So I don't really care where it's centered. This thing is so long it doesn't really matter to me where center is, you know, but let's think of a word. Um, let's just do craft. Uh, let's see, what do we have here? R C R A F T. That's five. Now I left the T in there from before, so this is C R A F, and the T is in there, so that gives me five three one three five. That is correct. So since the T is in there, we can start there and work backwards. The T would be in the five spot right here. So I'm going to line this up to the five. Now this is soft material. I mean, it's thin, but it's, it's really soft. So I'm going to back this up to make sure it doesn't go really, really deep and put that down in there. T. Okay. Now let's go backwards. We're going to do the F, which is line it up with three. F, and then we're going to take that out and do our A, which is space one, one, R, which is space three, and C, which is space five. It is very quick. Okay, let's pull that up. We do have some tape wanting to stay in there, but we could just take like an eraser and push that out. Now you can see how we have here. You can ink over that to make it really stand out. I could have pushed harder. I was a little hesitant to push too hard. And I'll show you another one that I actually did, and this is Create, and I pushed really hard on that, and it still didn't come through. But see, then I put an eyelet on that side. I rounded the corners, and I put a little dangle on there. So these would make great charms, and I'm thinking one thing that this would be good for would be like um, a plate cover over a journal. So now where's my scissors here? So all we have to do is put little holes on either side here. And either attach that in a band around a journal, or it could be just with brads. It, I think that'd be really cool. Imagine this with even pattern papers, as long as it's not too wild and you could still see the lettering. So I have two on chipboard. I have these here. So, and this one is chipboard too, but I got pushed so hard. I want you to see that you could see the round. You could see the round areas around the letters really too hard. So you really have to be careful about that. But loads of fun. I'm, I'm having fun with this. And I think this is going to be a great addition to my craft room because when I saw it, it was like, is this just a fad or is this something I really think I could use? And here's another one I did with Lolly. Again, I pushed too hard and look how the back is like that. You don't want to push that hard. Yes, I think this is really fun. And when I looked at it, you know, when you see a new pro a product out there and you're not sure, do I really need this? Is this something I'm going to use? And I felt like that this is something that I have been looking for, if that makes sense. And I know that there were other uh, systems out there for doing impressions into metal, 
but to me this just made it so much easier than the other system and I think this is great. I love it. I love it on chipboard. I think this is really uh, going to be fun because there's just so many possibilities. Obviously, you know, if you want something a little more durable, do the metal. But, you know, for charms, hanging off of a dangle, a tote, these are just fine. I love being able to write what I want. It feels like this is really filling a need. So from that standpoint, I don't feel like it was a waste of money because I knew it was something that I would be using. The idea of doing like a book plate on a journal was what really prompted me to get this. I do want to mention real quick, let's talk about how much room this takes in your craft area. This is about five inches wide. It's about 11 inches long. And the height, if you leave this extended up, the height is about 13 inches tall. So it might not fit on certain shelves. Now, if you pull this down and rubber band this to the base, it obviously wouldn't take as much room. But I still don't recommend leaving craft tools compressed due to spring fatigue. So, so many possibilities. I think you will love it. I would start off with these if I were you, and then you can move on to the washi and see if you think that is an alternative for you. If not, you could just invest in some more of these. But to me, um, I think the washi helped. Another thing you could do is there, is there are washies with plaid patterns on them, and that might be the way to go so you could get your orientation vertically and horizontally on your project. Thank you for watching. Uh, this is a two thumbs up from Lolly. Lolly seal of approval. Love it. And I think this is going to be something I'm going to enjoy playing with for a long time. And I'm also excited about the new fonts that are coming out.